Deputy Inspector General Police, members of the first line team, senior police officers, members of the press. I'm delighted to welcome you all to this important gathering where we shall have liked some of our notable achievements and breakthroughs in the last five weeks and discuss topical issues bordering our safety and security of our communities. With the understanding that we owe a duty to the public to get them abreast of our activities, policies and crime control mechanisms and successes, we are poised to ensure a constant engagement with the public to show transparency, accountability and commitment to changing the policy narratives of our nation. This meeting is significant as we enter this year's Ember Hunt and it will spur us to review the internal security situation of the country with a view to revamping our strategies towards bolstering the nation's security governance, economic growth and national development, especially as we traverse the unique last quarter of the year. The meeting will also avail us the opportunity to enumerate some of our operational plans towards policing the off-season gubernatorial election, which will be held concurrently in Barisa, Imo and Kogi states in November of this year. The internal security situation of the country over the last one month or thereabout has been relatively calm despite the threats of political and socio-economic instability that rooted the removal of first subsidy and post-election tribunals across the country. Comparatively, we have recorded lesser number of violent crimes and other major offenses across the country. We are all aware of the recent government efforts towards achieving economic recovery and growth. Through local and international engagements with investors and technocrats, the Nigeria Police Force is poised to support the efforts of government by providing the needed security and enabling environment for all legitimate businesses and other economic activities in Nigeria. We are not leaving any stone on top and we will continue to be on our toes in ensuring that we play our roles well in the efforts towards achieving economic growth as well as social and political development of our country. Consequently, all command commissioners of police and other tactical commanders are hereby directed to ensure adequate security is in place and sustained in their areas of responsibilities. Any attempt by unscrupulous elements to sabotage the economic revival that our country is about to witness will be met with stiff opposition from all of us. In the past five weeks, our committed officers have demonstrated relentless determination in upholding law and order through meticulously planned and well-coordinated operations driven by actionable intelligence. The Nigeria Police Force has effectively disrupted multiple infamous criminal syndicates involved in organized crimes, leading to arrests of 488 armed robbery suspects, 187 kidnap suspects, 198 homicide suspects, 59 suspects for possession of prohibited firearms, 168 suspects involved in cases of rape, defilement and other sexual offenses, 265 suspected autists, and 1,891 suspects for various crimes. A total of 127 firearms of different calibers, 612 assorted ammunition, and 89 stolen vehicles were recovered nationwide, while 71 kidnap victims were rescued on court and subsequently reunited with their families and loved ones within the same period of five weeks. In order to tackle all forms of crimes, In order to tackle all forms of arms-related cases in the country, we have 
were set up an ad hoc committee tasked with the comprehensive review of firearms license, licensing and regulations in line with the Firearms Act and other extant laws in the interest of public safety and general security. The committee's mandate will encompass a thorough assessment of current firearms licensing procedures and regulations with the aim of enhancing their effectiveness, transparency and accountability. This will be done in collaboration with the relevant stakeholders to ensure a holistic and well-informed review. On this note, all individuals involved in the wrongful possession of arms and light weapons are hereby warned to submit such illegally possessed weapons to the police at the police station nearest to them. <laughs> this will attract no sanction. All state commissioners of police and supervising assistant inspectors general of police in charge of zonal commands as well as tactical commanders are by this announcement mandated to immediately commence a total clampdown on the illegal fabrications, sales, possession and use of prohibited firearms in the country. All Nigerians are hereby urged to report all suspicious firearms related, related activities to their local police stations. This can also be reported through the various MPF social media platforms for prompt response and action. The Special Intervention Code. In furtherance of our resolve to ensure that all forms of violent crimes in Nigeria are adequately prepared for, identified, and tackled, and in line with my earlier directive for the establishment of a 40,000 strong Special Intervention Squad, a team of 25 trainers and instructors drawn from various police colleges and training schools have been carefully selected to embark on a specialized training abroad. The mission is to give them relevant training in the Special Intervention Squad Program, an initiative aimed at equipping our personnel with advanced skills and techniques for handling complex security challenges across the country. Recognizing the importance of cutting-edge technology in modern law enforcement, we have made significant investments in upgrading our infrastructure and digital capabilities, and these are yielding positive results. The Central Motor Registry, CMR, which was recently automated and rolled out, have revolutionized police response to the challenge of stolen vehicles in the country. The platform affords Nigerians the opportunity to register their vehicles online, which improves the, chance, which improves the chances of recovering such vehicles in the event that they get stolen. In the period under review, the CMR platform has witnessed a total registration of 1,244 vehicles, out of which 234 were found to have been reported stolen on the platform. The swift response. Thank you. The swift response of the CMR test officers in conjunction with field operatives led to the recovery of 46 stolen vehicles so far. This number is included in the total number of 89 stolen vehicles recovered in the last five weeks. Efforts are still ongoing to recover more with the hope, with the hope of recovering more. Recently, in response to the escalating cyber threats targeting the banking and financial sector, as well as the unfortunate incidents of several unsuspecting members of the public falling prey to high yield investment fraud, the Nigeria Police Force National Cyber Crime Center, MPF NCC, was given approval to convey a pivotal symposium which brought together compliant and fraud desk officers from various banks across the country with the primary objective of fostering active collaboration and engagement in our ongoing fight against cybercrime. 
building on this initiative, a well-coordinated intelligence-led operation was initiated, resulting in the apprehension of 10 total cyber criminals. This operation conducted from August 16 to 28, 2023, was in direct response to the emergence of a novel cyber, cyber threat characterized by the creation of cloned banking websites facilitating high-yield investment scams and money laundering. The arrested persons, all male residents of the Federal Capital Territory, have provided confessions regarding their varying degrees of involvement in these criminal activities. Following the completion of the investigation, they have accordingly been charged to court. I strongly urge members of the I strongly urge members of the global cyber community to maintain vigilance and promptly report any platforms promising or realistic high returns of minimal investment or any other forms of cyber crime through the police dedicated e reporting portal at iscb.mpf.gov.ng. Safe Schools Initiative. In line with our commitment to bolster the safety of our educational institutions across the country, we will soon be announcing the deployment of technology in the operational activities of our school protection squad. We are delighted to have engaged technical partners who are already collaborating with us in this regard. Our focal officers as well as strategic managers have already undergone training in preparation for the implementation of this technology-driven approach. Similarly, we launched the standard operating procedure, SOP, manual, for the school's protection squad on August 9, 2023, at the Abuja Hotel in Sibs, for Abuja. This significant step follows the recent establishment of the school's protection squad, which is a specialized unit dedicated to civilian schools and educational institutions nationwide. The SOP manual serves as a comprehensive guide outlining the operational framework for the school's protection squad. It delineates the unit's organizational structure, mobilization procedures, and the code of conduct for its officers. Additionally, it establishes protocols for collaborative efforts with other security agencies, ensuring a coordinated response to threats against educational institutions with operative strategies, including intelligence gathering, community policing partnerships, fostering police public cooperation, collaborating with other agencies, securing internally displaced persons, deploying logistical assets, offering humanitarian services, and providing training to school managers, teachers, and local communities to effectively respond to emergency situations. The NPF Gender Policy. As a follow-up to efforts aimed at promoting gender inclusivity and enhanced professional development within the Nigerian Police Force, our administration has approved a reviewed gender policy for the Nigerian Police Force, which was recently launched to cater for the gender sensitivity of our present climate. <laughs> Similarly, our administration has overseen a mentoring program for young women officers. <laughs> Thank you, ARG, for some of This initiative aligns with our commitment to implementing the National Action Plan on Women peace and security in line with the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325. The program, which began with an interactive session led by the first gender advisor and other senior female officers, aims to equip young female officers with the skills and confidence needed for successful careers. They will receive continuous mentorship and guidance from experienced female officers of the field, fostering personal and professional growth 
which will in turn promote asthma and behavioral change in our officers. This is not limited to only the female corps, but also the male officers will benefit from this initiative. The Nigeria Police Force is dedicated to fostering gender diversity and inclusivity at all levels as we adapt to modern challenges, contributing to a more effective and resilient policing system in Nigeria. General discipline. Discipline is paramount in entrenching professionalism, and we will spare no effort in upholding the standard of discipline in our officers. The IGP monitoring unit and the escort operatives, along with supervisory senior officers, are now being deployed to check the checkpoints on our highways. Our goal is to ensure strategically placed and corruption-free checkpoints that prioritize public safety and minimize inconveniences. While we acknowledge concerns about checkpoints, they are vital for visibility policy. I therefore urge members of the public to be patient with our men deployed to the checkpoints. Their presence at the checkpoint is for safety. Members of the public who experience an ugly encounter with men are urged to report such ugly experience promptly through any of the phone numbers that have earlier been published nationwide. And if the experience is pleasant, you may also wish to share. We are equally aware of the challenge posed by the continued presence of unauthorized persons on the various highways around the country in the guise of revenue collection, who constantly constitute new signs on the highways by obstructing the flow of traffic and engaging in mischievous activities such as the seizure of vehicles, collection of fines, and other unlawful activities. All state commissioners of police are hereby directed to immediately commence the dismantling of such non-security checkpoints within their areas of responsibilities and arrest all violators for prompt prosecution. To bolster accountability and transparency within the force, we have taken steps such as reinforcing the IGP monitoring unit and the complaint response unit based at the force headquarters. And efforts are ongoing to establish complaint response unit offices in the states of integration. The office has earlier been given to all state commissioners of police to ensure the establishment of the CRU offices in their respective state command as part of our commitment to combating corruption and improve professionalism in the Nigerian police force. Those command commissioners of police who are yet to comply with this directive are hereby given a deadline of three weeks to comply. Administration infrastructure and welfare. The present police administration very well understands the importance of welfare to bolster efficiency of police officers. Hence, we have commenced the review of the policy and contract and agreements on renovating, remodeling, and reconstructing existing police barracks and office accommodation infrastructure around the country. To this end, the board of the Nigerian Police Force for Practice Development and Construction Company, where I sit as the chairman, recently appointed one of the best hands in the property development in Nigeria, Mr. Akibo Kuniro, as the executive consultant to drive a special housing agenda for the police. I have no doubt that the consultant will bring his expertise and experience to bear in making our dream of house for all police officers and men in Nigeria a reality. <laughs> Training and development. In alignment with the firm commitment of the current police administration, under my leadership, to foster 
foster a culture of improved behavioral and attitudinal change within the Nigerian police force. I am pleased to announce that I have given full approval for the commencement of an extensive nationwide relaxation program for all of our officers and men to be anchored by the Department of Training and Development. This initiative aims at catalyzing a transformative journey, emphasizing essential facets such as cultivating emotional intelligence, ethics and professional conduct, refining effective communication skills, and instilling positive values across the ranks of our esteemed force. The foundation of any effective police, or police force lies in the character and conduct of its officers. As such, this comprehensive reorientation program represents a bifurcal step towards not only enhancing the professional competence of our personnel, but also nurturing the new ethos grounded in integrity, respect, and service to our communities. It's our firm belief that by focusing on these fundamental aspects, we can foster a more compassionate, efficient, and responsive police force that serves as a true beacon of hope and safety for all citizens across our great nation. I am also pleased to announce that the Anna Police Strategic Managers Conference and Retreat for this year will come up between 29th October and 2nd November 2023 in Ogori, Imo This conference and retreat serves as a paramount platform for knowledge exchange, strategic planning, and the strengthening of our collective resolve to enhance policy in our nation. It's an opportunity for us to reflect on our achievements, discuss emerging challenges, and chart the course for even more effective policing. Your active participation and engagement are crucial as we work together to continue improving the safety and security of our citizens. This year's conference promises to be more innovative than the previous years. Further details on the conference and retreat will be communicated in due course. And I, as I look forward to seeing you all there. Situations across the states. Sanfara Police Command. In light of recent distressing events, we must not forget the abductions of eight National Youth Service Corps members in Sanfara. The safety and well being of all our citizens, particularly our young KYC members, remain utmost important to us. We are firm in our commitment to intensify our efforts and ensuring the safe rescue of these abducted core members and all others still in captivity of criminal gangs in any part of the country. Currently, we are actively engaged in the sharing and analyzing intelligence gathered thus far, while also exploring collaborative efforts with other security agencies to secure the unconditional release of these individuals as swiftly as possible without harm. It is imperative to note that rescue operations generally demand a careful, tactical and deliberate approach conducted with the utmost caution to avoid unintended harm to the victims. Rivers to this command. The tragic killing of a divisional police officer S.P. Paco and Bashi in River State is another event which serves as a stark reminder of the multi-dimensional challenges we face in maintaining security and order across our nation. We have mobilized efforts to ensure the perpetrators of this mindless killing are brought to swift justice while we sound a lot of serious money to those who have patience for killing our policemen. The same officer was known for his courageous exploits against vicious criminal elements, terrorizing the communities where he served. His gruesome murder and subsequent mutilation of his body 
is unacceptable to us. The perpetrators of this heinous crime have more than sleep, and they shall sleep no more. They will be hunted down with all resources at our disposal. Never again shall we be ordinary in our response to the killing of our officers. Kano State Command. In Kano, we recorded the evacuation of large quantities of fake and expired drugs on 22nd August 2023, discovered in two different warehouses located at Malakato Market. Those who engaged in the illicit business of trading in expired and substandard drugs are as callous as those who are killing our innocent citizens. We will from now on intensify our collaboration with the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFTA, in ensuring that this group of criminals are no longer given space to operate in our communities. Lagos State Command. Similarly, in Lagos State Police Command, proactive intelligence-based operations have significantly contributed to maintaining law and order in the state. 